Hello and welcome to a quick overview of how to install and configure VMware vFabric Hyperic 5.0, a component of the VC Operations Management Suite, designed to help web operations teams monitor the application infrastructure across physical machines, virtual infrastructure, or the cloud. The installation itself is very easy, and of course, if you do have any problems, there is additional documentation for Hyperic located online. The installation itself is made up of four easy steps. To begin with, we will simply review and verify the prerequisites for installation and make sure that you have gathered all the information you will need. The second step is to actually download the OVA and deploy the Hyperic virtual appliance. And then there are two simple tasks after the download, creating an IP pool and deploying and verifying that the virtual appliance boots up. There is an additional step for licensing Hyperic, but we won't be covering that in this video. Licensing is covered in many of the other installation videos, and Hyperic is unique in that it comes with a built-in 60-day evaluation license. And for that reason, we'll point out how to check the evaluation license and show you exactly where your timer is for your evaluation period. And then finally, once everything is up and running, we will verify communications with the Hyperic server through the user interface by actually going in and installing our first agent by simply downloading the agent to the box, installing it, discovering that particular server, and then verifying that metrics are being collected. So to begin with, let's look at the short list of prerequisites for installing Hyperic 5.0. For resource requirements, we recommend 80 gigs of disk space, 8 gigs of memory, and 4 virtual CPU. And that will be split amongst the two VMs of the vApp, one for the vFabric Hyperic server, and one for the vFabric Postgres database. Now, they won't be split evenly, so a little bit more memory and a little bit more disk space go to the Postgres database. But as long as you have this amount available, there should be no problem getting the virtual appliance installed. We will need to open ports during the installation, mostly between and on the agent side. As you can see, TCP port 7443 and 2144 need to be available for any machines you will be installing agents on, both for inbound and outbound communication. Now this is noted as a prerequisite step and won't be covered during the installation video, so be sure to do this on any machine where you wish to install those agents. Now the same thing is true for the user interface. If for some reason you have firewalls between the browser you're using and the location where the Hyperic server will be running, you will need to make sure those ports are open as well. As far as software requirements for the Hyperic 5.0 OVA, it requires vCenter Server 5.0 and up. If you do have an older version of vCenter, you can still install and use Hyperic. However, you would need to download and use the installable binders. Again, that won't be covered in this video. We'll only be covering the 5.0 OVA installation. With that, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll want to do is to create an IP pool. The reason we create an IP pool is because when you're dealing with an OVA deployment in a virtual appliance, we'll be able to enter some of the data directly into the installation, but some of it has to be pulled from what would be considered metadata, and we will create that metadata through the IP pool. To do that, we'll go ahead and click on our data center, then IP pools, and click add. Now this is very straightforward and simple. We just give it a name. In this case, we will call it the Hyperic pool, and we're going to just type in the subnet here. The subnet that we will be installing it on is 10, 140, 51, 0. And we'll give it the default gateway of 10, 140, 51, 253. A key point here is that we do not want to enable the IP pool. We're not actually using it as an IP pool. As we said, we're just using it for the purposes of gathering this metadata that we wouldn't otherwise be able to gather. We want to use DNS, so let's click that tab and grab a DNS entry and put that in here. The last thing we need to do is to associate it with a network. Now in this example environment, there's only one network, but in your case, you should choose the network where all of your management components are running. Let's select our network and click OK, and we'll see that the IP pool has been created. We can verify it and update that if necessary. And from here, we can go ahead and start the deployment of the OVA. Let's select the Management Infrastructure cluster where we want that OVA to run. And then from the File menu, select Deploy OVF. Then we will browse to the location where we downloaded the OVA file. Now, it is possible that this OVA file may have been downloaded as a .tar file. 
This is a browser-dependent issue depending on which browser you use to originally save the file. Simply rename .tar to .ova if necessary. So let's select that package, click Next, and this screen allows you to verify that this is indeed what we want to do, download and deploy vFabric Hyperic 5.0. We'll click Next, accept the user license agreement, Next again, and then we'll drop this particular Hyperic V app into our Management VM folder. Now we won't bother changing the name here, but you can change the name of the V app itself at this point if you wanted to. Click Next, choose the storage that we want to deploy this V app to, and then here we get to choose the provisioning type. It is recommended that you use thick provisioning eager zeroed, not thick provisioning lazy zeroed, and certainly not thin provisioning. Now, we can begin to choose which networks we want this deployed to. This should match our IP pools. In this case, we'll ignore the warning at the bottom since we've got it set up to go to the VM network already. But be sure those are set to match the IP pools and set to the same network themselves, and there should be no problem. For IP allocation, we recommend to use fixed. Here we have the opportunity to put in the database username and the administrator username. We recommend leaving them as the default, HQ Admin. Then we can put in our new passwords and confirm that password has been put in there correctly. Now it is important to note that these default passwords are not only the database username and Hyperic Admin username passwords, they will also be the root passwords for the two VMs. So if you ever need root access to those VMs for SSH, etc., simply access them through HQ Admin and your root password. Now, let's go ahead and choose our IPs, which have already been set aside for this exact purpose. In this case, we'll use 13 and 14 and say Next. And then here we can verify that all the entries are correct. And we can select Power On After Deployment to save us a step we won't have to do later and go ahead and hit Finish. Now, depending on your environment, this may take different amounts of time. In our pretty small environment, it's very quick, maybe four or five minutes. It could take you maybe 10 or 15 minutes, depending on latency over your network or your storage capacity. Once complete, you'll see the dialog letting you know the app has been successfully deployed. Now, let's go ahead and close this window and wait a while for the VMs to start up. Now we can see the Hyperic V app and the two VMs that we described earlier have all started. One of the things you can do is to click on the VMs themselves and look at the console. If the console displays this blue screen, you know that at least the VM itself and the OS are powered up. Now don't head over to the UI quite yet because there will still be some services that are starting up on these machines for a few minutes. We suggest giving it four or five minutes after you see the blue screen on both the Hyperic server and on the database server before you jump into the user interface. After our short wait, let's go ahead and look at the UI by pointing our browser to the IP of the Hyperic server, port 7080, and hitting return. We see our login screen where we log in as HQ admin with our root password, and everything here appears to be good to go for the Hyperic server and the database. Now the next step is to install our first agent. We're going to do that from a Windows machine. So on this Windows box, we've already downloaded the agent installation files, and now we simply need to deploy them. Now this is very easy to do. We simply open up that particular compressed folder, grab the Hyperic Agent 5.0 directory, and drop it right into C colon. This is the recommended installation location for a Windows environment. Once that installs, we can open up a command window and verify that it's there. Let's go into that new directory, and then into the vin subdirectory, and let's go ahead and install our first agent. Now please note, as we mentioned earlier, that we've already done the firewall settings and opened up all the necessary ports on this box. Please be sure that you've done that beforehand, or the installation will give you an error. And here it's as easy as two simple steps. Type hq agent.bat install, followed by hqagent.bat start. And then we just need to answer a series of questions about our configuration. So right now, Hyperic is starting the services that we've just installed. And once it's done, it will have us walk through the communication protocol, the ports, and IPs that we will want to use for this particular agent. Here, generally, we would recommend not to use unidirectional communication. 
This might be necessary for situations where the Hyperic server would not be able to communicate with the agent, for example, in a situation where there's a firewall where the server can't communicate in one direction. But generally here, select No if possible. Now we'll put in the IP address of the Hyperic server, and we're going to use secure communications. Basically, that means the connection between the agent and the server will be encrypted. Now we'll select which port we're going to use. We'll stick with the default SSL port of 7443, and it's going to go out and verify the connection at this point. And here, if we did have a firewall set up, this is where we would get that error. Now, we will give it the default login for the Hyperic server and the root password we used earlier. And this will give the agent access to the Hyperic server itself. Now, we will input the IP of the box. So it lets the Hyperic server know how to contact the agent if it needs to. Sometimes you'll have machines with multiple IPs or multiple NICs. In this case, we only have one, so we'll go with that one. Then we need to define the port that the Hyperic server will use to contact this particular agent. And in this case, that's 2144 again. That's another one of the firewall ports that we opened up earlier. And now, as a last step, we'll confirm the self-signed certificate, even though it can't be verified, and we're done. We've successfully set up the agent. Now, at this point, we can go back to our Hyperic dashboard, click on the Dashboard tab again, and you'll see we've already discovered that box that we just added the agent to, and it's also discovered some of the services that are running on that box. In this case, the HQ agent, .NET, and SQL Server. Now we need to add those to our inventory so that we can start collecting data from them. While that collection goes on in the background, let's take a look quickly at the Administration tab where you can see information about the Hyperic license. Now, as we mentioned earlier, this is the license that came with the evaluation copy. Here, you can easily see when it expires, our platform limit, or the total number of machines or agents that we can deploy. Now, after just a few minutes, we can go back to the Resources tab and see that there is the machine that we discovered with our new agent, and we're already collecting data from that machine. And that completes our installation of Hyperic 5.0. For more information on Hyperic or any of the VMware management products, please visit VMware.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm.